Hey, welcome to Barley and Hops. Hey, I wanted to take this opportunity on the precursor for this video to show you, look here, uh, this is an example of a still running, uh, we, and we did a close up of the exit port so you can see how your distillate should be coming out of the still. Uh, you know, con we, we get a lot of questions about, well, how do I know if my still is running right? And, you know, and I've searched all over the internet too, and, and most of the answers you get are, well, you'll know it when it happens. Well, that's not a good answer. Uh, so I figured, you know, a picture speaks a thousand words. And here's a, a couple of pictures of just what it should look like when uh, your still is running, and it's running at its optimal. So you'll notice that there's, you know, drip, 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 spurt, drip, 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 drip spurt. And we also, we often um, use the analogy of the pencil lead. It's about as thick as a pencil lead, uh, but that's kind of hard to, to, to capture and wrap your mind around it unless you see it. So here it is, and now I hope that you've had an opportunity to see this, that uh, you know, it'll click and you'll go, now I got it. So without further ado, let's go right into our uh, video about equipment and some tips and tricks and things that I really think it should Well, welcome back to Barley and Hops again. In extension of our equipment video series here that we're doing, um, I want to introduce you to the 8-gallon model. <clears throat> we did the 15-gallon uh, with the 3-inch uh, column. Now we've got the 8-gallon model. And this is why I like the 8-gallon model so much, because it is a little bit more compact, and there's plenty of room. If you'll see here that it's, a, it's quite a bit shorter, so once you stack it all up, you, you're not going to need a stepladder to get to it. Plus, you're only going to fill up with five gallons, which leaves you plenty of headroom. Um, you know, and that brings up a topic. We're going to have to talk about uh, anti-foam aging, but that's another video all in itself. But just don't forget that. Uh, we got to use some anti-foam aging. keeps it from bubbling up and getting all in your column and all that stuff goes on. All right. Um, I've already put this clamp and put the lid on here. And I wanted to show you this pot because in particular, see, there are many, many different ways, and we call them all techniques. And all these techniques are, are perfect, and they all work, and they're all great. Uh, some techniques are better than others, and something whatever you like is what works best for you is the right technique. Uh, or you can do it George's way. Uh, that's only I call it George's way because that's the technique I found that I'm more comfortable with. So we're going to add this. Here's what happens: uh, you've got the small, the bottom stack, and then you've got the top stack, and we're going to put those together. And here's what it comes with: it comes with the silicone gaskets and I always put my screen that is on the bottom there keep stuff from falling back down in the column back into your kettle I always put that at the top because I like to pack the top of the column not the entire column and remember it's, it's optional if you want to pack the whole column it's totally up to you uh, I kind of stray away from that because I'm, I'm still working towards perfection and, uh, and we talked once before in a video too that you know there's plates plates are a physical thing as well as a measurement and so I'm kind of stuck on maybe two to three plates in the top column, and, and I'll show you that. So we just place this column here, and then the clamp goes around the outside, and these clamps are just phenomenal because they screw on so easy, and they only have to be finger tight. Now, for those of you who recall, if you've ever used a copper still, or one that you make out of a pressure cooker or something like that, and you're using, uh, you know, some copper tubing to connect it. Uh, in a lot of cases, you have to mix up a paste, you know, in the paste, there you go. You only, it only needs to be finger tight. And you mix up a paste, you know, you put it on there to make sure it doesn't leak, because when it leaks, it's two things happen. One, you got the danger of fire, uh, which is extremely bad. Uh, and two, you're actually losing a lot. So, and you'd be surprised how much you lose with just a small leak. So uh, these things are extremely uh, sturdy and uh, they don't leak and you don't need any paste. All right, let's add the, uh, the next one on here. And so this is the top column. Uh, you'd put the top column on, unscrew your C-clamp. Uh, place the top column on there. Now, see, this gets a little bit high. It's, it's a little tall because I've got it up on a table. Um, but not to worry, because as I told you before, these things are maneuverable, and you can manipulate them pretty easy. So believe it or not, taking it off the table and setting it down on, as an example, setting it on a burner, like about right there, 
well, by God. <laughs> you said it on the burner right there, that you've got the bung that goes in the very top, and then you can place your thermometer in here, or in this particular case, we've got, this is something we built. We remember, if you remember, we did this together. This is our PID controller that we built. Matter of fact, we built it right there on the, on the counter. Um, I've sold a couple of them. People have called and I've said, sure, I'll send you one. Just understand it. Uh, it works. And believe it or not, they're a whole lot cheaper than some of the other online uh, PID controllers I have found. Um, th here's the thermocouple. The thermocouple goes right in the very top of that. And then you turn on your PID controller and what this does is here's the outlets. It adjusts the heat. Isn't that amazing? Now, now you can also use the heat band, and that's for this, for the electric. Uh, we've got two internal heat cartridges that I'm going to show you here in a second. We're going to insert them, and I'll show you how they work. Uh, or you could use a, a propane burner, and that's when you put the diffuser plate down. There are places still on top of that. And use the propane burner. And if you did that, you wouldn't need a thermocouple. Uh, so do not use a PID controller if you're going to use propane. Could, because you can't control the propane with the PID controller. The PID controller is only good for if you're using electricity in order to heat it. So let's move that out of the way. And we're going to bring this still back up here. Now these two 1500 watt heater cartridges that came here, I got this pot and what I did was when I ordered this pot, uh, and make sure you tell us if you want it, I put, got two couplings on here. I got an upper and a lower. If you want just a drain, we'll put one, we'll put, I can't lift that up that high. We'll put a lower on there for you. Let's get down here and look at that. There you can see them. There's the lower one and there's the upper one. So I've got two of them here. Uh, so if you want just a drain in here, we'll make sure we put it in the lower portion. So you got to make sure you tell us that's what you want it for. If you want it as a heating element, make sure you tell us that as well. If you want two, let us know if you want two heating elements or you're looking for an upper and a lower, one for a drain and one for a heater element. In this particular case, I've got this one, and there's a plug that goes here, it's a one inch plug, so we can plug it up or you can put a tap on it to drain it. And one 1500 watt heater element is sufficient for this still. So you'd insert that and it screws right into that one inch coupling. So screw that in nice and tight, and then you'll plug this into our PID controller, and that controls the heat inside our still. And of course, you'd have your other, you'd have a plug here that would plug that off, or a tap, however you want to, however you want to do that. Uh, in this particular case, it also gives us an option, if you've got a second 1500 watt heating element, you can put that other heating element in that bottom one as well. And the only thing that's going to do is it's going to reduce the amount of time it takes to heat that, uh, that mash up. And make sure you put these in there before you assemble the steel because, of, yeah, of course, they're heavier on the end and they're not as easy to turn and twist into it. There you go. So you can have actually two heater elements in there that will crisscross and heat that up in a very, very short period of time. So that's the options for you. Let me take those out. And I'll set this aside because I got one other thing I wanted to show you. And remember when we wired, when we wired up this PID controller, we wired it up so that the top was run by the PID controller and the bottom receptacle was run by this switch. So when you turn the switch on, your water pump would work. When you turn the switch off, the water pump would go off. That way you can operate it, you can control it separately. That's why we did that. Uh, again, it's up to you. Uh, the options are unlimited. Let's move this out of the way. And we'll bring this back up just a little bit. Now we've had a little bit of confusion and we've had a couple of discussions about copper mesh and copper mesh inside our column. Uh, again, I, I use it as a habit. Um, it's a really good medium. I've also used marbles. Marbles are amazing because they're so easy to clean. They've got a lot of great surface area. And what we want to have happen is we want our vapors to start to rise and pre-condense. Start to condense and drop. 
And as they drop, the most volatile substance in that vapor, being the ethyl alcohol, at the lower uh, vaporization point, uh, we want them to rise again. We want that to continue to happen. That's what reflux is. It's just a continuous process. And they will eventually rise through these tubes and out the condenser and come out as a much more pure product. Okay, not more of a product, just a purer product. So this, happens, this has everything to do with not quantity of your product. Uh, this has everything to do with the purity of the product. Okay, so I've used marbles. Uh, some people use rashing rings. I'm not a real fan of rashing rings because they're just, they're ceramic and they're difficult to clean and keep clean. Uh, but marbles are real easy to clean. Now we also use copper. And copper has several properties that lend itself to use in stills. Um, it, so it removes the sulfur. There's this chemical reaction that takes place. Now whether it really makes a big difference in taste or not is totally up to you. It's, and, and again, and I had this discussion online with someone, it's very, very subjective, but that's not the important part. It, the important thing is, is it, what, does, does it make you happy? And is it, the, the, does it do for you what you want it to do? I'll tell you, the copper does for me what I want it to do because it's also another medium in order for my distillate to condense on and start to drop and those drips drop through. And then the, again, my most volatile substance, again, rising back up through that and picking up all that ethyl alcohol. Now, when you use these, here's what I want to caution you about is a lot of people are confused about how to actually use the copper. It, you'd measure out about 18, 20, 22 inches or so. Take a pair of scissors and cut it. And then just roll it up. Now you want to roll it up in such a manner that it's not really packed tight, but it's large enough to fit inside your column without sliding out, number one. And, but number two, you want to make sure it's not packed so tight that it doesn't stop up the column. And this just slides in the end of the column. And you see it's just tight enough that it fits in there and it won't fall out, but it's not so tight that it blocks it up. Now, I'll normally use two, I'll introduce copper in two different, two separate rolls. Um, in the bags of copper that you got to come with us, there's, there's 30 feet of it. So you're only using two pieces about, not even double arms wide. And roll that up. Now, remember we talked earlier about plates Plates being a physical thing, and plates also being a measurement. Well, it just so happens that this four inch roll of copper is equivalent to just about a plate in the measurement field. Now, <laughs> excuse me, the, the other thing about a plate being a physical object is in your larger four inch and larger columns, you'll have a copper plate with some, it, it's a bubble plate. Uh, so therefore, someone will say, I've got a still with four plates in it. Well, yeah, you got four of those, plates and they're usually about six to eight inches apart from each other. Well in this particular case I'm going to have a reflux still with the equivalent of two plates. I just put two rolls of copper in there. Now um, you, you know you do increase the amount of plates and plate value when you start adding marbles and you know other things like that in there. So but don't, so don't go crazy and again folks this is not it's not hard but don't use GI math. You know, if two plates are good, L10 ought to really get her done. No, it, it, see, now you're getting to the point of ludicrousy and you're gonna stop it up. Uh, you're gonna cause a dangerous reaction. All right, so that's it for that. Now, one last thing I wanted to share with you because this is the most amazing thing about this still that I just really, really love. Uh, we think of everything, not we, but Brewhouse thinks of everything. Their attitude and my attitude is the same way. Look, when your box shows up and you open it up, we want you to play with it. You want to play with it. Uh, and our belief is, is that you should be able to do that. Uh, so you shouldn't need to have to get anything else from us again, uh, unless you just want some ex accessories. So everything you need is inside the box. It's, you have the kettle, you're going to have the column, you're going to have the packing, you're going to have the thermometer, the bung, you're going to have the water hoses, you're going to have all the connectors, you're going to have the water pump, you're going to have the water control system. That's if you get the pot reflux combination. It, it, everything's there. The diffuser plate should be there. Um, if you're missing anything, we, we're going to jot your name down and we're going to make sure that we fill that order so that it's complete. But we want to get something to you that you can actually use. So you don't have to go through the box and go, oops. Well, now I need to go out and get a pump. Oops, now I need to go out and get a, it'll all be in there. 
What is also in there you'll find is you'll find this black O-ring. And a lot of folks are confused. Here, let me show you what this black O-ring is for. Now, not only do we have a superb system here, some of you are familiar with this. This is an old beer keg. This is an 8-gallon beer keg, or is it an 8.5-gallon? I can't remember, but it's a small beer keg, uh, like a pony keg. Uh, and it goes up, you can get to 15 and a half gallon cakes or 16 gallon cakes. But it all depends on who makes them. But guess what? All of the connectors are two inch. So, oh, that was my notifier on, I, I know somebody's either coming up or going down the steps. What this is, this is a black O-ring. So if you've got an old beer keg laying around and all you need is the column, you can get in touch with us, we'll send you the column. The column with all the connectors or with all these, uh, clamps and, and rings and uh, we'll also send you the I gotta find it now I got it in here somewhere oh here it is it is a silicone gasket that goes in between the columns but this black one goes on the bottom and you place it on there and it goes right in the small groove that's on the bottom of that that column and that fits perfectly on the top of that beer keg and then you put your clamp around it so you're able to use a beer keg as your kettle and attach the brew house two inch column to the top of the beer keg. Solves most of your problems. That's what you can do with that old beer keg your wife's been telling you to try to get rid of. Don't get rid of it. Use it as a still. Um, here's the only challenge that you're going to have. And this is probably left for another video sometime at some point. But you'll notice that in the center here, this one's open. I've already taken it out, but there's, there's going to be a small, uh, a small knot in there. And what you need to do is just take a screwdriver and push it. It's a ball. And it's a ball relief. It's a relief valve. And you'll push that ball, and all the pressure will be released from the keg. If you don't release the pressure, you'll never get that mechanism out. Now, that mechanism in this 8-gallon keg is about 9 inches deep. In a 15 to 16-gallon tank, you know, it's going to be a whole lot deeper. But they're really easy to get out. You just need a small screwdriver to pull this you have a, a, uh, an O-ring uh, that, that's a collapsible ring. It, what it is is just a seat ring that just sits there and holds that mechanism inside the top of that kettle. And you, if you pull that out, that ring will pull out. Once that ring pulls out, you've got two knots here. And you'll just take a hammer and a screwdriver, tap it until it lines up with the two edges and the two edges will line up and you can reach in and grab it and it'll pull, it'll pull straight out. So it doesn't screw out, it just pulls straight out. So all it does is line up and come out, all right? So that, the only challenge with these now is cleaning them. Uh, and, and that's why we offer the eight gallon kettle, which is really, really easy. Six inch opening, almost eight inch opening, so it's easy to clean. Uh, these are really, really hard to clean because you can't get in and under there with your hand. So, that's it. We've introduced you to just about everything we've got. And by gosh, if uh, look, if you need something, give us a call. If you get any questions, give us a call. Uh, we'll start the, some more videos on uh, processes. We'll, we'll do some more videos on actually running one of these so you can see that actually happening. Um, and you know, you know, maybe some recipes. Uh, we, we'll, we'll throw all the tips and tricks at you that we possibly can because this is a science-based hobby with a whole lot of art involved in it. And there are oodles and oodles of techniques. And we love nothing more than to see you be successful with what you want to do. So get in touch with us and let us know what your challenges are. And also feel free to let us know what your successes are. Uh, because we're here for you. Until next time, happy distilling.